It was a cold and lonely evening down at the wharf. And once again, I found myself searching for the one thing that would satisfy my cravings. So I'll just take a cup of the uh, time shot. Right? Okay. Bodega Bay. Ugh. You know, sometimes when you're craving something, there's just nothing else that will do. You've got to have it. And today I just had to have a cup of uh, clam chowder from my favorite seafood restaurant down here in uh, Bodega Bay, California. At last. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh man. So good. Mmm. Oh. I love this stuff, but man, I mean, this was seven dollars, seven dollars, seven dollars for this little cup, and the bowl was, you know, like ten dollars. I don't know. And that's great. I totally get it. You know, you're coming to Bodega Bay. It's homemade. It's they catch the stuff right there off the coast, and you know they make it fresh. But I don't know. I don't know. It's just like it's a lot. It's a lot of money. I mean clam chowder how complicated is clam chowder to make yourself anyway how hard can it be to make clam chowder i mean how complicated is this it's clams and chowder what exactly is chowder you know what i need some help marcus would know what to do my brother is my resident uh, go-to culinary expert on all things um experimental and culinary and uh and um i think uh Let's give him a quick call. See what he thinks. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. Uh, hang on a second. All right. All right. Hey, how's it going? I'm uh, pretty good. I just bought some expensive clam chowder down at the at the at the docks and it was delicious, but I'm like it's got to yeah, be it's probably like 25 bucks for a bowl of chowder. Yeah, right? it's like super expensive. How hard can it be to make clam chowder? And I was just wondering if you ever made it. I've made it one time, yeah. and yeah. it came out pretty good. I mean, it wasn't my best. I mean, I'd like to try it a few more times and really kind of perfect the, you know, the essence of it and make it my own. Sure. But, it, you know, it wasn't that hard. You know, potatoes, clam, that juice that it sits in, heavy whipping cream, and maybe cornstarch, you salt to taste. Uh, salt, and of course, yeah. Butter was in there, too. Butter, oh. Yeah, onions and cook it all down. There's so many recipes out there. There's no solid way that anybody does it. I think I got enough to get started. Uh, thanks for the help, and I'll check in with, check in with you when, I'm, uh, when I've got chowder. Yes, all right. let me know when the pot's steaming. Absolutely. All right, talk steaming to you later. Chowder. <laughs> all right, man, take care. All right, See bye. You. Four ninety nine. Three seventy nine. Wow, it really comes down out there. Ah, and it's the perfect weather for making chowder. It's chowder time. Let's go. All right, here we are in the uh, how hard can it be test kitchen, and we got everything we need to try to make clam chowder. Clam chowder, I mean clam chowder. <laughs> that would be a good shortcut, but no. Clams, mince, and an onion, a couple of potatoes, half and half, and all-purpose flour. Let's begin. Okay. Whew. Already hot. Okay. To do this, all you gotta do is mince up the potatoes. I don't even know if this is gonna be any good. That's why I'm making a small batch of this stuff. I am making a, I'm like cutting the recipe roughly in into a third of what they have, half to a third of what they're asking for. The onion. The onion is a miracle product, a miracle product of nature and um, it makes soups 
become soup. You can't have a soup without onion. So we're gonna go with a half a cup. Making it happen. Just, oh my God, these are some strong onions. I'm gonna throw in roughly half of those onions, you know? Whew. Okay, the recipe also calls for celery and carrots. Well, you know what? I don't have any of those complicated things, so I'm not gonna use them. It'll be fine. Oh my God. Ew, this is kind of gross. Uh, I don't know if you're getting a shot of this, but uh, the clams are packed in a juice and Apparently, you got to use that juice to make the clam chowder. So, oh, they smell weird too. <laughs> I don't know about this. It's like, it's like I feel like I'm down at the, um, I feel like I'm down at the docks or something. Okay, oh boy. Look at that. All right, so you got to save the juice. A shot of clam juice. Should I, should I taste it? Should I, uh, no, <laughs> wait, no, I can't do it. God, you don't get a lot of clams in the... I mean, it's ridiculous. It's all juice. You got like a third of a can of clams here. Check that out. All right, I guess it'll work. Uh, the recipe that from all recipes calls for three cans of clams and clam juice. Well, like I said, we're making a small experimental batch. Keep that in mind. What you want to do is you put the clam juice in. Just enough water. I like to use spring water just to cover them. There, boom. All right, it's off to the stove. All right, so now we just heat this up until everything comes to an even temperature and, and the vegetables are soft. But let's move that over here, the side burner. Because now we got to make the roux. Uh, it's not that big a deal. It's done in a lot of cooking. Uh, it's basically a sauce made with butter and um, flour, essentially. Butter. One second. All right, butter. How much butter? Quarter cup. I think we're gonna go with a quarter, quarter cup of butter. Okay, we got our butter melting. I'm gonna turn that down so it doesn't burn. And we're gonna use the all-purpose flour. We're gonna whisk this in. I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm just gonna roughly. I'm not. A, I'm not a chef, right? I'm just gonna start adding flour till it seems good. Okay, great. That looks like enough to me. Make it smooth, we don't want lumpy clam chowder. There is some people who've had this recipe say, oh, it tastes so floury. Well, apparently they didn't cook their roux long enough. You really wanna stir this stuff until it actually um, browns a tiny bit. You gotta keep this move in here. The whole point is to cook the flour, toast it, as they say. I'm gonna toast that flour. Again, I don't know. I've never done this before, right? I have no idea. I, I've never made a roux before, right? This is my first roux. Ooh, oh, it's changing. Check out that color. All right, now it's time for the cream. And again, you whisk that cream in until it, uh... whoa, it's steaming. I don't know if it's supposed to do that. Okay, just keep it going. You don't add the clams early on. You add them near the end because apparently if you cook clams much at all, they um, they get like really tough. Yummy, delicious clam juice. Ooh, it's getting really thick. Oh, hurry, hurry. Clam time. A touch of vinegar. Just, uh, and it calls for red wine vinegar. All I have is apple cider vinegar, so let's hope it, uh, hope it, uh, it's okay. And why do we do that? Why do we put in some vinegar? Apparently a little acidity is a good thing to make to bring out the flavors. A teaspoonful of salt, maybe even a little more. I like things salty. And we now have clam chowder. So you just wanna let this cook just enough to when you feel like the clams have actually come up to temperature, um, which I'm gonna give it just another moment or two. And I'll meet you guys at the table. As the clam chowder is simmering, I'm wondering how do you get fresh clams for, uh, you know, for clam chowder. It seems like you, know, you shouldn't have to use stuff out of a can. And then I remembered my friend Jade on Cape Cod and how she gets clams. The best thing about going out and catching your own clams is, is this. Not a person, just all the avocets, sandpiper seagulls, just glorious. Okay, what you need is a clamming rake, which has, these tines that dig into the sand and the basket to catch your goodies, your clams or your oysters. And then a bushel basket. This has seen some use as you can see. 
and I have a floaty thing on it so it keeps it floating if I need it. And then this is your sizer to size your clams. So when you scrape your rake through the sand, you'll feel like you're hitting a stone. And then you get this little guy. He's used to make clam chowder. This is a little cherry stone. Let's see if it fits through. It fits through this. Try and do it with one hand. Then he lives another day. This little guy's too small. So he goes back in the water. Okay, you can see the scratch marks I've been making with my rake as I'm digging into the sand. And hold up a size, much better size. This is almost a quahog. It's a large cherry stone. Perfect for chowder. Get a bunch of these. Fresh, cold, out of the water, beautiful. I can't get over the size of these oysters that I'm finding. Look at that. That oyster's bigger than my hand. Look how big that thing is. Holy moly. Now in the low tide, you can actually see when it's calm, which is beautiful today. That's just a big, fat, gorgeous oyster sitting right there. And oysters are easy because you can just see them on top of the water. I mean, from the top of the water. And since the water is so cold, I will use my rake to pick that bad boy up. That's one big honking cold water oyster. So these are the three distinct sizes of clams. You have your little necks, great to eat raw. Cherry stones, raw or cooked, makes stuffed quahogs um, or whatever stuffed clams. And then you've got your quahog size, which is larger, full of meat, um, great for chowder. Not a bad haul for quick hours work. Some oysters and clams. All right, and at last we have our masterpiece. Oh, that looks good. Look at that. It's thick and rich. Let's just try some of this out. Oh, man, that's beautiful. And a little bit more. Boom. Perfect. Set that right there. All right. The pot does it taste good. Have we actually created clam chowder? Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, no clam chowder would be complete without some fresh ground pepper, but don't have any of that. So we're going to go with store-bought uh, pre-ground pepper. It'll be fine. Okay, here we go, folks. It's probably pretty hot, so I should be careful. Whoa. Oh my God, it's delicious. Wow. It worked! Oh my god, this is fantastic. Way better than any other clam chowder I think I've ever had. Oh my gosh, it's rich, it's flavorful, it's buttery. Um, the clams are in there. Mm. Well, there you go, people. How hard can it be to make your own clam chowder? I mean, Apparently not that hard. <laughs> it really wasn't. I mean, we pay so much money to have clam chowder down by the ocean at a restaurant. And that's great because you're paying for the whole environment and the experience and those people work hard. But you could do it yourself too. You know, you're, if you're not anywhere near the ocean, you don't have to go to a store and get a can out of the, you know, canned soup. You can actually like get a couple simple ingredients and make it yourself so easy. It's unbelievably good, just like this. Mm. Oh my god, I could eat like four bowls of this stuff. Well, as far as um, how hard it is, I'd say about one beer. About one beer, yep. And the scale of uh, how, how hard can it be, easily accomplish it with the stuff you have in the kitchen already, minus maybe a, a can of clams you have to go to the store for. Mm. That is fantastic. Wow, doesn't even need anything else. And that's a really important thing to know. You notice I didn't measure anything. I didn't measure. I didn't weigh. I just kind of went with my instinct. Um, which kind of flies in the face of having a, you know, 
a recipe to follow, but you gotta just make a recipe as your own. They're just guidelines. You know, don't be afraid to just try stuff out and don't make a gigantic pot the first time. <laughs> you know, make something small. That way, you know, in the privacy of your own home, some afternoon when no one's around, that way you can try it out and uh, see if you like it or not. All right, success from the uh, test kitchen here at How Hard Can It Be? Hmm, unbelievable. Well, that's our show. If you want to see more, of course, like and subscribe, but maybe consider supporting us on Patreon. Yeah, we just opened a new Patreon, and we have some, our very first patrons, Royce Williams, uh, Justine Packard, Bill at Paradox Photography, Brian Altiker, and Cindy O'Connor down in LA. So thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Oh yeah, and also thanks to my brother Marcus who inspired this whole episode. And uh, thank you, Jade, for uh, taking us clamming. That was fantastic. You know, I'm gonna go over to your store, I think, and uh, online and support you for doing that for us. Um, and maybe get myself a nice clam chowder bowl. All right, see you guys next time. <laughs>